Hello and welcome to Kayak, where everything's controlled by evil cats. My name's Beast. I'm a human, a servant of the evil feline horde, and your host. Today we're going to be speaking about the 2001 horror movie, 13 Ghosts. Now this is a rated R movie, which is rated that because of horror, violence, gore, nudity, and language. The version I have is the 2002 DVD released by Warner Brothers, and it's in one of those stupid cardboard cases with a plastic clip on the side. Not my favorite DVD case at all. Now, this movie gets a bunch of mixed reviews. Some people love it, some people hate it. And some of the problem is, it's based on a 1960s movie with the same name, but in it, the audience themselves had to wear special glasses in order to see the ghosts. So let's get started. The movie opens in an old auto yard, police tape blowing in the wind, when all of a sudden a large convoy of trucks break down the gate and a large glass box is placed down and a vintage car pulls up. We discover that these people are ghost hunters of sorts and they're after a spirit that is trapped there. A large tanker truck comes in, spraying blood everywhere, and suddenly an unseen force kills three people before getting trapped inside the box. And we discover that the old man running the operation was also killed. The opening credits introduce us to a family that tragically loses the mother in a house fire. And then they hit rock bottom. The father, who is a simple math teacher, has lost everything in debt. But thankfully, his uncle has suddenly died and leaves his house to them, and the family can move in immediately. The father, daughter, a son that is supposed to be obsessed with death, and their live and nanny. Live and nanny? Wait a minute. Didn't they just say they were broke? Anyway, they go off with the lawyer to check out their new house. When they get to the house, they are amazed to discover that the house is made out of glass and metal. They also meet one of the male ghost hunters from the beginning of the movie, who is now dressed up in an outfit for the electric company and claims that he needs to check the breakers in the basement. They open the door, discover that the house is filled with antiques and artifacts from their great uncle's adventure. The father and the lawyer go to sign papers in the house's library, the ghost hunter goes down to the basement, and the kids and the nanny split up and go wandering around the house, even though they were told not to. Once in the basement, the male ghost hunter discovers that it is filled with large glass boxes, much like the one from the auto yard, and they are all filled with angry ghosts. He then goes up the stairs and interrupts the father and the lawyer, and as they are talking, the lawyer disappears. The lawyer has snuck away to a secret door in the basement, and he retrieves a large case full of money, but him moving the large case releases a foot pedal that starts up a machine. Back in the library, we discover that the house is actually a machine that was designed by the devil and is powered by the twelve spirits of the Black Zodiac. And it turns out the father's uncle built the house so that he could receive unlimited power from the devil. Back in the basement, as the lawyer counts his money, a lever pops up and one of the doors to the glass boxes opens, releasing one of the twelve ghosts. The lawyer, realizing this, backs up and gets sliced in half as one of the glass doors close. Upstairs, the daughter has found and cleaned a bedroom with an attached bathroom, and as she's messing around, the ghost that was just released appears, and then proceeds to do absolutely nothing. I mean, there's a scene where she's sitting in a tub full of bloody water, and the girl uses the tub's faucet to wash her face, and just as the ghost turns the water coming out of the faucet into blood, the father interrupts the girl, and that's about all she does. The father, the male ghost hunter, the daughter, and the nanny meet up and realize that the boy has wandered off, and they decide to go looking for him. Meanwhile, the boy is riding his scooter around in the basement, and ends up finally wrecking and landing hard onto the ground. He starts then hearing voices coming out of the speaker of his recorder, 
he jumps up, comes face to face with his dead uncle in one of the glass ghost boxes, and then the boy disappears. The four adults of the movie decide to split up to go look for the boy. The nanny goes with the ghost hunter, and the father goes with the daughter. Both groups run into ghosts that are recently released as the house begins to shift and change. The father and daughter are saved by a new female ghost hunter that has somehow snuck into the house due to a hole that opened up during mid-shift. The other group is saved by the house shifting. Both groups head back to the library because it appears to be the only safe place in the house, but the daughter disappears before she can reach there. Once into the library, the two ghost hunters begin to fight, and there is a brief naming of the twelve black zodiacs, and there is a discussion about the thirteenth ghost. The father decides to head back out into the house to look for his kids using a spare piece of glass from the library. The father and the male ghost hunter go off to try and find the kids, while the nanny and the female ghost hunter go to see if there is some way they can stop the machine. The father and the male ghost hunter are attacked by ghosts, and the ghost hunter sacrifices himself so that the father can live. The nanny and the female ghost hunter discover the split body of the lawyer. The female ghost hunter then knocks out the nanny with a book, because apparently she'd been working with the uncle the entire time, and she begins to play a summoning spell so that all the ghosts will gather in the proper place in the machine because apparently she had been working with the uncle the entire time. The father has a brief touching moment with his dead wife because she apparently is one of the trapped spirits in the house. The uncle kills the female ghost hunter, and as the father goes to the room where the ghosts have gathered, he sees that his kids have been placed into the heart of the machine, and then he confronts his uncle, who is still very much alive. Meanwhile, the nanny wakes up and starts messing around with the internals of the machine and pulls levers, causing the machine to start to tear itself apart. The ghosts are released, and the father jumps into the heart of the machine to save his children. Meanwhile, the twelve ghosts, released from the spell, attack the uncle and tear him to pieces. The machine destroys itself, and the house is in ruins. The ghosts are released, and the father, son, daughter, and nanny make it out alive. So that was 13 ghosts. The ghosts look awesome, their makeup is amazing, but they don't really do anything in the movie. I mean, the coolest part about them is their backstories, and you have to go to the special features on the DVD to find it. The sets look cool, the way the house moves and chains is an interesting idea, the actors are surprisingly good, the R rating is kind of a joke. Honestly, this movie could have done without the little nudity it had, and it only has four scenes in the whole movie that I would even consider violent score. And honestly, the first scene in the junkyard could easily be edited. This movie has an all too familiar flaw in the way it's presented, that being everyone's favorite modern action flick trope, jump cut fever, which happens so often in this that I start feeling like I have a severe case of whiplash. And the flickering effect, when the ghosts appear, that show them there and then not, and then back and forth, is a cool idea, but when you start doing it a lot, it makes me feel like I'm seriously going to start having a seizure at any moment. Overall, I personally enjoyed this movie, but it's definitely not a horror movie. I kind of feel it's more of a supernatural action movie. It has, great, it has a bunch of great ideas, but the execution isn't the best. I would love to see this movie remade, maybe with a darker supernatural suspense horror theme to it. Overall, I give it a 3.5 out of 5 paws.